Markey. Thank you. Thanks very much. Administrator Regan, welcome. Glad to have you back at the uh, Environment Public Works Committee again. Um, congratulations on the progress that seems to be coming on GHG emissions rules and regulations. I appreciate that very much. You may have uh, said it in your prepared testimony, but do you have a general uh, idea of what the schedule is for the rollout of GHG emissions rules in the months ahead? We, we do, I would say for the 111 rules, uh, we're looking at uh, late April, and which focuses on um, controlling greenhouse gas emissions from our power sector. Uh, we have uh, rules coming out for our heavy duty vehicles and light duty vehicles uh, in the coming weeks, yep. uh, which we're excited ahead about. Ahead of that. the power plant ones. Ahead of the power yep. plant rules. And then we hope to have soon uh, a rule that's focused on uh, our uh, risk and uh, our, our mercury air toxic standard as well, which is important because it's an air toxics rule, but we are trying to provide some regulatory certainty and a picture for the industry and for our communities on how all of these things coincide with one another. Well, it matters a lot to us in Rhode Island, and I suspect Massachusetts as well, and I expect Delaware as well as downwind states, because we get a lot of that stuff that comes our way. And I can remember when uh, the plan for dealing with pollutants coming out of power plants was to raise the smokestacks higher so that it shot further up into the air and traveled away from the polluter state and landed more on our states. You know, thanks a bunch. So you guys being there to regulate that is really important to us because when the home polluting state has as their solution to simply dump it higher up into the atmosphere so it falls on other states more, that's not a great solution. Um, let's talk a little bit about methane. Uh, you guys have got a terrific methane rule rolling along. Um, we've talked before about how bad the reporting is of methane leakage. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, and organizations that have taken a hard look at it and consider that we're really underreporting by a lot. Uh, what are you doing to make uh, EPA methane reporting more accurate to the actual methane leakage that's out there? Well, we've been engaged in a lot of robust conversations uh, with the industry, uh, with the private sector, with nonprofits um, looking at the best available technologies and best management practices that we can all use and coincide uh, with or, or collaborate on. Uh, we do have a proposed rule and a supplemental that's coming out that uh, we that will improve gonna be, the reporting accuracy. It's going to improve the reporting, uh, the, the data collection, and the uh, innovation uh, around the technologies that can be used to control methane. That coupled with the $1.5 billion from IRA that will go directly to the states to help with some on-the-ground community-led projects, yep. state-led projects. It's going to be transformational for, for this sector and for methane. Now, we had um, your colleague in the cabinet, Attorney General Garland, into the Judiciary Committee. And in response to my questions, he uh, acknowledged that the Department of Justice was going to put together a task force to look at enforcement against methane leaks across the various departments and divisions uh, within justice. Um, and I asked him to keep building it out, uh, that I'd like to see a whole of government enforcement approach in which EPA, Interior, Treasury, Justice, uh, and also potentially state and local enforcement officials had a role designing strategies to, when you find a leak, fix the leak, mm -hmm. and make sure that the response is quick by the lawyers to make sure it gets fixed. What is your status with respect to interagency cooperation on methane enforcement once a leak is detected? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud to say that we have a very strong relationship with DOJ on all of our enforcement programs. This one won't be in any, any exception. Uh, so our folks are conversing. Um, we are definitely prepared and taking a look at this new regulation and the supplemental and how it will be implemented and enforced. Uh, along with these resources, the $1.5 billion that we're doling out to the states to hold them accountable for uh, oversight and um, implementation and execution on how these resources will be put in place. So we feel pretty good about it. Good. Well, I urge you to uh, support a completely broad, across government, multi-agency, not just you and DOJ uh, task force to respond. And last of all, on methane, um, I know 
that the IRA was a big deal. Even with the IRA, we are still not on a pathway to climate safety. We're not even really close. We still need other major interventions. One of the most important interventions is the social cost of carbon. And I know there's one baked into your methane regulation and that that is working through the administrative process. I urge you to make sure that administrative process is as rabbit, rabbit, <laughs> rapid, <laughs> rapid, and robust, not <laughs> rabid and robust, although rabid might not be a bad way to look at it these days, <laughs> um, as rapid and robust as it can be to get that social cost of carbon into law as quickly and firmly as possible when you do that. Absolutely. Thank you. 